Hi, my name is Julie Weintraub. I am a human resources officer. I'm the team lead for the YPP examinations program. Hello, my name is Xuan Cho. I'm an associate statistician working for the Department of Economic and Social Affairs. My name is Geneva Damayanti and I am an Associate Public Information Officer in the Department of Global Communications. My name is Longezo Peter Hamisi and I work for the Department of Global Communications. YPP is really a, a very unique recruitment initiative. It focuses on rejuvenating the workforce and improving its geographic balance. So first is being a national of an un- or underrepresented member state within the UN. And so what that means really is that there are a lot of countries, obviously, that participate within the UN, and we look to make sure that there's a level of geographic representation across them. So YPP focuses, again, on candidates from un- and underrepresented member states. So that's the first eligibility criteria. Second is that candidates need to be 32 years old or younger to participate. They need to be either fully fluent in English or French. And then finally, they just need to have a bachelor's degree or its equivalent uh, in an area that's relevant for this specific exam. So no work experience required. Good question. So every year the application period is open in May or June and uh, each year as well it's something uh, important for candidates to know we alternate the exams that are offered. So for example one year it could be information management and legal affairs and then the next year it could be exams focusing on economic affairs and uh, information technology. So candidates should just be aware that each year they will see different job openings, again, in May or June, and uh, they would submit their application just as they would for any other UN job opening through Inspira. The, the stages of the exam process can vary a little bit from each year as well, but the important thing to know is that the exams are administered online and the process really does consist essentially of an online written exam and an interview stage. Mm -hmm. So focusing on the online written exam, the first steps um, would include part of a general paper, uh, what we call a general paper, and a specialized paper. And the general paper really focuses on foundational competencies and abilities that are important to being able to work in an international affairs context. Mm -hmm. And then the specialized paper is exactly what it sounds like. It really focuses on the substantive elements that are relevant to that specific exam that the candidate applied to. Mm -hmm. So the types of questions may vary as well. There could be multiple choice. There could be open-ended. Uh, it could be that the written exam is administered all at one time, or it could be that candidates take a portion and then if they are successful, they would take another portion uh, a month or so later. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of that information is, is provided to the candidates well in advance as well. So typically it's about a month or so after the interview that we would establish the roster. Mm -hmm. Something that I, I think it's very important for candidates to understand is that success on the YPP uh, examination process does not mean immediate placement into a position. Those that are successful in the exam are placed on what we call a, a roster or a list of pre-approved candidates mm -hmm. so that when vacancies arise, uh, then those candidates can be readily placed into a position. Mm -hmm. And that roster actually has a life cycle or is valid for a period of three years. Mm -hmm. So really it could be pretty soon after um, you've gone through the interview process and were successful and placed on the roster that an appropriate vacancy comes up and you're placed into it. Or really it might take the course of the full three years. I 
joined the UN in 2015. Mm. So for my first duty station, I lived in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, working for the Economic Commission for Africa. I joined the UN in 2017 as a consultant at the UN Environment Program in Geneva. And um, I have lived in eight different countries and regions around the world. So I joined the United Nations in March 2015. And since then, I've worked full time in two locations. First of all, at headquarters in New York, and then in uh, Darfur, Sudan. Aside from that, I've also uh, deployed uh, frequently into Somalia because I spent two and a half years as a political affairs officer covering Somalia and during that time I spent a cumulative three months on the ground in Mogadishu, Somalia. I applied to the test in 2013 uh, through the online web portal Inspirat, that is a UN recruitment portal. I took the exam in statistics. I took the exam under the Infonet Job Network, which is the public information and conference management. In terms of how I applied for the test, I got a message that my country, Malawi, was underrepresented, so I applied for the YPP test in political affairs. So honestly, the way that I suggest candidates prepare for the test is by taking all of the resources that we provide to them. Uh, my team and I really want to make sure that the candidates are set for success, so we provide them with sample questions, uh, access to the testing platform, a suggested reading list. We really want to make sure that candidates have everything that they need, so it's just a matter of making the time and a plan to study with the resources that we provide. Um, I also did a lot of uh, background research um, to gain knowledge about how the UN works, um, the system, the entire uh, organization and its history, its structure and its relation with the member state. I also um, went through all the websites um, of the UN that are related to um, public information especially. I went through all the uh, multimedia channels that the United Nations have, such as social media, you know, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, just to see what kind of communication they have put out um, to, uh, to allow myself to be familiar with, with the language that they use. Um, I also went through and reviewed uh, the graduate textbook of my statistic major and that helped me to keep me up to date on my technical skills. So from my perspective, I'd say something that really helps candidates stand out is if they've had international exposure, whether it be through education or experience, they're just more familiar with the type of organization that is the United Nations, but really what it all comes down to is their performance on the exam since it is a competitive process. So it's all about preparing and studying and uh, making sure that they take the process seriously. So in terms of background, it is certainly recommended and it's definitely helpful to know another one of the six major United Nations languages. So additionally, Prior to applying for the YPP, it is recommended that you have some work experience, and this can, this can take different forms. Uh, it could be in the form of an internship that you do at the United Nations while uh, in the middle of your graduate studies, or it could be uh, a field placement through the, a program like the United Nations Volunteer Program, or some public sector experience outside of the United Nations. All of that or any of that would be helpful in your YPP application. What I found most fulfilling about the job, I think, is very specific to uh, the positions that I'm currently in. And I think it is definitely the way that I was able to contribute to the shaping of image and also voice of the organizations um, and to project that, project that to our target audience. The most fulfilling part of the United Nations job, I feel like, is the ability, the possibility to work with um, a lot of extremely talented and smart people from around the world. And to working with them, uh, you feel you are like a sponge that can absorb the wisdom from the world every single day. 
So one of the good things about the United Nations is that if you're interested, you can request a field post. And in, if you are successful in, in finding a field post, your parent office can allow you to go to the field for up to two years. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go to the field to uh, uh, you know, uh, acquire a position in a peacekeeping operation. So I moved to uh, Darfur, Sudan, and I was stationed there for one year. Uh, I worked in the uh, position of special assistant to the mission chief of staff in UNAMID. Uh, it's called the Hybrid United Nations African Union Mission in Darfur. Mm -hmm. It's the second largest peacekeeping mission in the world. Right now, the annual budget is about 700 million American dollars. So a lot of responsibilities there, but so much to learn. I, I definitely had a bird's eye view of how a UN peacekeeping operation works. So it was definitely very rewarding. First and most importantly, it's important to get your master's degree. In general, the instructions say you need a bachelor's degree, but in reality, the program is quite competitive with tens of thousands of applicants from around the world. So having a master's degree will definitely give you an advantage. The advice that I would offer to young professionals is to really apply to everything that they can, uh, be open to every opportunity, and also to really make sure that they're taking the time and reading instructions for applications. There are a lot of different opportunities out there, so definitely um, look out for those opportunities, not just on um, UN Inspira, let's say. There are different types of um, platforms that you can use to look for opportunities. Um, bookmark all those links and check every week, because that's what I did, um, you know, just to find out what kind of opportunities out there. And be flexible, even though you might have um, a goal in mind, but um, we have to start somewhere and there might be some compromise that you will have to make, so be flexible. It's important to keep an eye out on the YPP website to see if your country is listed as underrepresented under because that's your chance to sit for the YPP exam. Young people should have a, um, a trust in themselves that they can be the agent of change and they can make um, the impossible happen uh, in this volatile world. If you'd like to learn more about the Young Professionals Program, please visit us at careers.un.org slash YPP. Thank you.